Hello everyone, welcome to another installment of I'm Building a Beetleweight. For the Psychotic Break build, uh, I think it was two videos ago, I ran into an issue where the pulleys that were connected to the weapon were melting, and I think I have a few ideas as to why, other than the fact that they're plastic. So let's look into that, try some different pulleys, and see if we can get to the bottom of should I be using plastic or do I need to go to aluminum? So let's first take a look at the previous spin-up test, which I think was like two videos ago, and um, let's look again at the issue that I was having with the power not getting transferred directly into the weapon. So here's that video again. Interesting. Kind of sounds like it's not, it's like laboring a little bit. Yeah, let me take a look and see what happens. So as you can see, it just didn't really ramp up the way it was supposed to. I wish I had maybe gotten a second footage of me with the controller or something like that. But once it hit about half power, it really didn't accelerate beyond that. And usually from half to full, there should be a lot more acceleration and this thing should go a lot faster. So let me um, put all this over on the workbench. I'll show you the pulleys close up, show you exactly the failure modes on that. And then we'll look at um, what the issues actually are. So let's first look at the two pulleys. I've got the one right here that goes um, on the actual weapon itself, and then I have this other one that goes onto the motor. And if you look closely on this one, you can see that there's kind of a ring around the top. That actually corresponds with the bearing that it was sitting on. I had a little shim or a spacer so that it hit the um, inner race of the bearing properly and you can see that it just kind of melted in. Now what happened here is if you remember back in the video, I had that big block sitting on top of the chassis. It was pressing down into this and um, causing rubbing. So this isn't that big of a concern. I think this center stack is probably gonna be metal um, just because I don't want plastic rubbing on the metal bearing. So that could cause an issue. So that's where some of this came from and that was causing some binding and um, some issues. Furthermore, if we look at the edge of this pulley, let me see if I can um, focus in on this a little bit better. Okay, so if we look at the edge, uh, maybe looking over at this side is a little bit easier. It shouldn't really go that far in. Here is a um, one that I haven't run. It's really subtle and it's kind of difficult to see on camera, but this one kind of has a different um, finish on the inside of the groove. And if we take one of the belts and put it inside, the belt actually doesn't fit cleanly in there. It's actually kind of, it's kind of stuck inside of that groove. So it was actually rubbing, oops, it was rubbing on the inside and wearing down. And if we look at the other one, you can see the exact same thing. And it actually wore down so much that pieces of the um, plastic are kind of flaking away and the top and bottom is actually very thin. Like in some places, where was it? Yeah, in some places like right here, it's actually chipping away and it's gone. So it rubbed so far down inside that, you know, like right here, you're kind of seeing some of the infill, you're seeing some layer separation. So yeah, the um, belt just rubbed way too much and um, created an issue to where it really wasn't an effective pulley anymore. So that's what happened with these plastic pulleys. So why did the rubbing happen? I have a couple theories as to why the rubbing happened. First off, there was pressure right here that as I showed earlier, this is the other pulley, but it was um, pressing on that bearing because um, this really isn't all that rigid and there's nothing underneath of it to stop it from bowing in. So there was pressure on that bearing, which was causing this to melt a little bit. Um, that is not going to be a good fit um, for the pulley. You know, it's gonna create some resistance there. So that was one issue. Um, the second issue was that I was using an additional one of these thrust washers up front, and it was um, creating a too tight of a, I don't know, it was too tight up front. I don't know how a better way to say that, um, but there was just too much in this stack. So there was some binding going on here. You might be able to tell it's a lot more free right now. It's a lot looser and there's a little bit 
of vertical play. Um, ultimately, I'm not going to have that kind of vertical play, but this was just too much to where it was compressing in the front, so there's a little bit of friction there. And the last issue that I think I ran into was that the belt was too loose. Right now, it's pretty darn tight. I made um, this pulley and back a little bit bigger. I adjusted the um, tensioner into the, uh, I guess the um, furthest along point, which gives it the most amount of tension. So this belt is about as tight as I would want it to be. I could probably go a little bit tighter, but it has very little deflection right now. So I think that was the issue is there was the um, pressure on this, which was creating the friction heat on that pulley. Then I had too much friction up here from the extra thrust, thrust washer. And then additionally, this belt was too loose. So when the motor was spinning to try and spin the weapon blade, there was a little bit of resistance there so it would want to slip. And then once it started slipping, just the inertia of this and the inertia of the motor caused it to eat away into the pulleys. And then once it started eating away at the pulleys, then everything was lost at that point. So yeah, I think that was the three issues, the loose belt, the um, issue up here with um, that being pressed on, and this was too tight and binding up. Okay, so when you're troubleshooting the design, you're trying to figure out what's wrong, a good idea is to control the variables. So we found out what the variables are. This is a variable, um, the belt tension was a variable, and the hub up front was a variable. So what I've done is I've added a fourth hole up here. So this will create as much belt tension as I feel comfortable with. So much so that it's almost a little difficult to get this together. Um, I think the wood frame is actually even bowing just the slightest bit. So it takes a little bit to kind of snap it together. So that's as much tension as I want to have. I've removed another one of the um, thrust washers. So now this has a little bit of play in it. So this won't be bound at all. You can see it's... Um, very loose right now without the actual belt tension on it. And you notice that these are gray. This is all nylon G now, so that means that this is the um, highest temperature stuff that I have, so it should hopefully um, hold up better in the friction. I've also redone the profile on these belts to give it a little bit more room. It wasn't um, quite as close as it used to be. And then, as I said previously, I made this a little bit bigger. So that should control for most of the variables and also there is a little nub here. It's hard to see from the print, and I'm not going to get that close in here, but there's a little lip right here along the side, which raises the bearing up, and I'm also going to use another shim on there, so I really shouldn't run into any issues with this rubbing. As you can see, it is nice and smooth on that bearing. The bearing um, outer race is never going to press into this and create those issues as before. So let's put this all together, get it in the test box, and see how it runs. If this doesn't run well, I think I'm going to have to go with aluminum. We're going to see how this runs, but I want to give you an idea of the tension that this is under right now. Hear that? That is really tight. I think this might be slightly too tight. I'm going to do a quick run, see if that's tight, and then I might end up backing this off to the um, other tension because it seems a little tight maybe. We'll see. Okay, so here is the test with the highest tension. We'll see if that works out. That's about half. Full power. Okay, so let's go look at the pulleys and see if there's any wear on them. I'm using this long poking stick because getting my head anywhere near here, it just blocks the whole view. So um, there seems to be absolutely no wear whatsoever on this pulley and this pulley. So they look really good. Everything is still very smooth. There was a little bit of laboring and the ESC, the battery um, back over here, and the motor are actually noticeably warm. Um, not like hot or dangerous or anything like that. Um, everything up here is nice and cool, but the motor is a little bit warmer than I would expect just for, you know, the minute or two testing that I did. So I'm going to change this tension to the um, slightly less tight method and we'll go from there and see what that looks like. Okay, so now I've got the um, 
second highest tension on here. And let's see if that's any different. That sounds really nice. Um, just for grins, it feels pretty stable. I'm gonna go from zero to full power, just straight. <laughs> That's pretty good. Um, so yeah, this actually seems a lot better. So let me run it for just, a, I don't know, like a minute or two, and then we'll take this off and look and see if there's any wear on the pulleys. So the last and final test that I want to do is over there, right there. Um, I have my little energy meter thing and I wanna see just kind of the current draw of this, um, just to kind of get an idea if the heat was coming from, you know, just excessive load, whatever that looks like. Now, this is just the wood blade, of course. The metal one is gonna draw more on startup, but ultimately when it's up to speed, they're gonna draw about the same because it really comes down to wind resistance. The weight doesn't matter as much once you kind of have that inertia going. So let's just pop it up to 50%. 160 watts, 11 amps. So it looks like the highest peak that I saw was around 34 amps and like 450, 500 watts, something like that. Let's try again. So it looks like at top speed we're hitting 31 to 32 amps, which is quite a bit for a beetle. Um, I'll have to do some calculations and see if that's going to be appropriate. Um, I th yeah, we'll just see. So that'll be in an upcoming video. This is just a good idea to know that yeah, we're somewhere around 30 amps just with the weapon spinning. So, you know, I'll do some quick calculations, see if we can do full three minutes with that. Okay. Overall, I think those tests went pretty well. Instead of uh, setting up the camera again and getting some close-up angles, I just decided to take some pictures instead because it's a little bit easier to see with the static pictures. And looking at them up close, there's really no comparison. The PLAs were just melted and crappy. These are a lot nicer. I can still see all the layer lines. There's no issues with melting, no friction whatsoever. Um, the belt looks good. Everything looks really good here. And I did run it pretty hard on um, that one extra belt tension. It was really, really tight. And I think that's much tighter than I would ever have it. So. I think overall the plastic pulleys should work out. This isn't a definitive test. It looks really good and it looks really promising. Ultimately, I don't have the weight or it's gonna be tricky to get the weight for the aluminum pulleys for both sides. I had some ideas in the um, last video with the melting. I had some ideas of doing like an aluminum sleeve so it wasn't a fully aluminum pulley, but if I went with two full aluminum pulleys, I think it's anywhere between 20 and 40 extra grams worth of weight, which I really just don't have or don't want to shave off from anywhere else. So, so far I'm pretty happy with the fact that I think the nylon pulleys could work out. PLA was never going to happen. We knew that, but I think the nylon could work out and the HP, whatever it is, the polyjet, that thing, uh, the prints that come off of that are a little bit more temperature resistant, friction resistant than even this nylon G stuff. Uh, PLA prints around 200, 190 to 200 degrees centigrade, and this stuff prints around 250. I'm not really sure what the HP is, but um, in my messing around with it, it seems like it is a higher temperature than even this stuff, so that's really good. The thing that does worry me a little bit is the current draw. So if you're calculating current draw, the easiest way to do it is just multiply it by 0.05. A match is three minutes, three minutes out of an hour, three divided by 60 equals 0.05. That is gonna tell you how much of an hour you need to run for. So if you're converting amp hours into you know, three minutes, you just say the current draw times 0.05 is how many amp hours you need the battery to be. So in this case, you saw that it was like a 30 amps. Let's just make it easy, 30 amps. 30 times 0.05 is 1.5. That means I need to have 1.5 amp hours. The batteries typically at this level are only gonna be about one amp hour. The one I was using is one amp hour. Going up to 1.5 is gonna be, once again, more weight, more size. That's gonna be difficult. 
I was really bummed out by this fact, but then I realized that this is a one-to-one -one gear ratio. Actually, it's not really even one-to-one. -one. This pulley is slightly bigger than this one, so it's like 0.9 or 0.8 to one, so I'm actually increasing the speed. So my tip speed, theoretically, is probably close to 400 miles an hour right now. That was never in the plans. As I said in the earlier video, I'm gonna do a 1.25 to one, so this pulley is gonna be significantly smaller. The only reason I didn't do it smaller in these tests was because I didn't have the belts for it. I will get smaller belts and I will do a smaller pulley here, so hopefully that will drop that current down to maybe even like 20. Once you start getting up into those super high RPMs, wind resistance becomes a huge issue. So if I can get that down to 20, Eh, 25 amps, then the one amp hour battery makes a lot more sense, but it's still going to be very tight. But everything in this build is just right on that razor's edge. So anyway, I think that's all I have for this video. Um, the pulleys look good. The plastic looks good. I think I am good to proceed to the next step in the process, which at this second, I'm not really sure what that is, but I will proceed regardless. So as, any, as always, thanks for watching. Check me out on Facebook. Check out the links below and look forward to the next version of my Beetleweight build for Psychotic Break. See you then.